I'm Lindsay Thomas, and my topic is the economy in Indonesia. Uh, in 2013, the Indonesian economy experienced its lowest growth rate in GDP since 2009. Um, since 2009, the GDP growth rate has been over 6%. Um, experts say that this is due to the central bank forcing up interest rates, um, so citizens of the country don't want to invest in addition of uh, raw materials and machinery haven't been imported as much. Um, this has pushed Indonesia into the fragile five, per se, of countries in that region that don't have very strong economies. Uh, the United States, since its growth in 2009, has experienced a lot more exports going into Is Indonesia, and we had hoped to double such exports um, in that time frame, so this unfortunately jeopardizes that. Um, but experts also say this crash in the economy was to be expected with higher foreign investment, and isn't is already stabilizing, so it should hopefully remedy itself in 2014. What sort of things is the United States kind of exporting to Indonesia, just generally? Um, like materials, uh, just basic um, clothing materials, cheap U.S. products that are very popular here, that are catching on in the East. Okay. I'm Scott Beard, and my topic was on um, the Thailand main opposition party challenging the recent election results. On February 4th, the Democrat Party, the opposition party of Thailand, announced that it would move, uh, ask the Constitutional Court to declare the results of the February 2nd election invalid. The Democrats are based in the capital city of Bangkok, and they represent the urban elite. By contrast, the majority party, uh, the Few Thai Party, is based on rural districts. They've been in power for some time now, and their pro uh, program has focused a lot on uh, welfare to the rural, poor districts, which has achieved a great degree of economic st stabilization, but at the same time, it has also run up very high budget deficits that have uh, tampered economists' views of the economy as a whole. Uh, the conflicts between these two parties stretch back, have been going on for months now. The Democrat Party officially boycotted elections and their supporters are, have been in the streets for the past couple of months now. Um, the result of this, as of now, there is no violence, but if the court were to rule one way or the other, it could spill into violence. The majority party has asked its supporters to refrain from engaging the uh, protesters representing the Democrat Party, but if they were to be kicked out of power, that could turn violent. The situation is very stable. Um, which, uh, which imperils Thailand's democracy, so the United States should react to this by mostly maintaining a hands-off work, but it should send out feelers to the two parties to try and meditate the peaceful end to this conflict before it spills into greater uh, political strife or even potentially civil war. Does the United States have a preference which side wins in this? Um, the few uh, the Few Thai Party was democratically elected, so in keeping with our views of promoting democracy around the world, um, we are leaning towards uh, that party in question. However, as long as we can keep things stable and ensure that free elections will continue in the future, that is uh, our primary goal right now. So if we can do that with the Democrats in power, then that should be an option that should be kept on the table. What's going on in Ukraine? I'm um, Kyle Gifritz. I'm going to talk about the demonstrations in the Ukraine right now. The demonstrations, they've been going on since November, ever since President Yanukovych uh, refused broader European Union integration. And they turned pretty violent in late January. However, that violence has tapered off since, mainly due to two reasons. One is the unpopular Prime Minister, Evernov, uh, resigned amid the pressure. And also, President Yanukovych um, recently repealed his harsh uh, anti-protest laws that he implemented in mid-January. Now, while the protests have certainly gotten less violent, uh, the protests have signed truce to the police, and the numbers have gone down. Uh, many experts believe the protesters are actually more emboldened and are still demanding the resignation of President Yanukovych. And while the pressure is still on him and his position does seem to be weakening, it is still unclear whether or not he will resign or he will resort to declaring a state of emergency and resort to military suppression of the opposition. The best the, the, what the U.S. should do, given the uh, Ukraine's significance as being one of the most populous countries in Eastern Europe and a buffer between the Russia and the rest of Europe, is to support the opposition through financial aid. Right now, the Ukraine economy is very weak given the turmoil, and uh, one of the main reasons Yanukovych refused the EU broader integration was because Russia was providing the regime with plenty of financial aid. 
if, um, if Yanukovych does resign, the U.S. should work with the EU to quickly set up a stable government within the Ukraine and quickly uh, help their economy. Right now, their uh, high vanilla, their um, currency, has depreciated by 7% relative to the euro. If Yanukovych decides to engage in a state of emergency and militarily suppress the opposition, the U.S. should condemn the human rights abuses. Is the U.S. worried about the Russian reaction to putting pressure on the Ukrainian government if the Russians have an interest in this? Uh, relations with Russia will likely suffer if Yanukovych is to resign, especially if it is um, as the result of U.S. and EU uh, cooperation with the opposition that forces him to resign. He is a uh, strong ally of Putin in this, and it's Putin who has a very strong interest in keeping him in power. Which of these three would be the most urgent um, item to be included in, in a briefing for the Secretary this morning? You've got a couple of cases, economic and, and civil, and the rest will be the one that the uh, top of the list, do you think? Years. Unless the Ukraine issue is up. Um, yeah, um, I would say Ukraine, not just because it's my issue, but because I heard about more in the news recently than if I hear about other news, I feel like the American public has heard more about the news. Between Ukraine and Thailand, which one matters more to the U.S.? Yeah, I would say uh, Ukraine, um, not to mention, as of now, the protests in Thailand have stayed peaceful. Hopefully they will continue to stay peaceful, whereas the protests in the Ukraine have turned violent, and the situation is, um, yeah, the situation is rapidly deteriorating over there, so that should be priority number one for Secretary. Okay. Thailand is. Thank you.